Hello, student. Once again, I welcome you all uh, in this uh, practical session of uh, ESPOS lab. Now, up till now, we have completed the group C practicals. Already, we have completed physically when all of you there in physically in the college. And uh, group B, that is the practical related with the legs and yak, that also uh, online we have completed. I have given you the demonstration and uh, uploaded the video related with that also how to conduct that practicals. Now we'll see some of the practicals related to the group A also. And uh, from the group A, uh, we, today we'll see the first practical, some of its theory and uh, uh, implementation. Now in the group A, uh, we have the first practical here uh, you can read the title design suitable data structure and implement pass on of two pass assembler uh, in java using the object oriented features okay so uh, this title simply means we have to uh, write the program in java and that program should uh, implement the pass on of two pass assembler okay means what here we have to uh, now what is the pass one of two pass assembler this already physically in the lectures we have seen okay uh, still we will also go through that so here uh, our input will be nothing but uh, assembly language program okay and output will be the uh, output will be the uh, symbol table okay so as you know uh, assembler is a kind of uh, a translator which take the input which uh, take the input language as an assembly language program and generate the machine code. Okay, so that is the functionality of assembler. Now, in uh, uh, in this uh, assembler, there are, as you know, there are the two types of the assembler used to be there. Already we have discussed the uh, single pass assemblers and the two pass assemblers. Okay, so, our, so here our practicals related to the two pass assembler. So, uh, in that two pass assembler, you know, there are the two passes, uh, pass one and the pass two. And out of that, we are discussing about the pass one of two pass assembler. Okay. Now, what is the concept of uh, assembler? What is the concept of pass? What is the one pass assembler, two pass assembler that in the further uh, section we will study? Okay. So, here we have to uh, now, as all of you know, uh, in case of the two pass assembler, the working of the assembler is divided into the two tasks. First task is uh, conducted in the pass one. Second task is conducted in the pass two. Where in the pass one, uh, the symbol table, literal table, pool table, this all the things are get generated, which is given as a input to the next uh, uh, pass, that is a pass two, and then pass two generate the machine code. Okay. So in this practical, we have to give the uh, in this practical, uh, we, we are not going to utilize any kind of assembler or all these kind of things. Uh, we are going to implement the program using the Java language. Okay, we'll write the program in the Java language. And uh, now, just like the assembler uh, does the processing of the program, okay, as uh, you must be knowing the structure of the assembler, like this is kind of structure of the assembler. Okay, this is your assembler. Okay, here input is nothing but the assembly language program, for example. Okay, and output is nothing but the machine code. Okay, now here we are not going to utilize the assembler as a translator. Okay, so here we are trying to demonstrate how the assembler works uh, with the help of the Java language. So we'll write the program in the Java. And uh, in that Java programming language uh, code, we uh, write the code uh, to implement the pass one of two pass assembler. Okay. As you know, the pass one, pass two structure also, like this is the pass one gives, and then this is a pass two. Okay. Here we'll give the input as a assembly language program. Okay, and then through this password pass to uh, assembler convert into the machine code. Okay, 
so you know the pass one generate the different kind of symbol table literal table pool table that already we have discussed in the lecture so here we are going to write the program in java and in the logical part of that code we are going to write the code to implement the pass one of two assembler means we write the code such that after taking the one particular assembly language program as a input uh, the that java programming code uh, will give us the output uh, as a uh, output as a symbol table understood the java programming code will write in such a way that uh, by taking the input as assembly language program that java program code uh, will give us output as a symbol table generation okay so in this uh, practical way we are going to generate only the symbol table not the literal table pool table etc okay so i hope you have you must understood what exactly we have to do here uh, we are going to write the program in java to implement the pass one of two pass assembler okay and uh, we will produce the output as a symbol table that because that is nothing but the output of pass one of two pass assembler okay so what is our objective uh, to do this practical is nothing but what we need to understand the, what are the data structure in the pass one of two pass assembler then to understand about the pass one assembler concept and understand the assembler directives also okay so uh, now uh, our problem problem statement already i told you we have to implement the pass one of two pass assembler using the java language where input will be the assembly language program output will be the symbol table got it so uh, after after this practical you must be able to understand the pass one uh, what is the concept of pass one assembler and uh, how to implement the symbol table and also you will get the knowledge about the advanced assembler directives also okay so uh, here uh, you can see uh, what is our software requirement software requirement the latest jdk uh, you, you need to install on the ubuntu system and you need the computer machine to implement this then uh, now in the theory part already we have studied in the class still we just have the recap like uh, uh, there are the different kind of languages as you know in the computer science like uh, uh, high level languages like c c++ java etc and low level languages so assembly language is a one of the low level programming language okay which consists of the different kind of symbolic instruction okay uh, then uh, as also you know assembler is a kind of program that accept the uh input as assembly language program and produce the machine language code as a machine code or the object code okay then what are the advantages of uh, assembly language that you must be knowing uh, different advantages like uh, uh it is having the close interaction with the hardware components okay and uh, as it is having the close interaction with the hardware components the execution is faster uh, when you utilize the assembler okay and uh, some of the disadvantages are also there the writing the program uh, uh, there are the restriction on the uh, uh, program that you write using the assembly language program okay also there is a lot of problem related with the portability also then uh, uh, as you can see here uh, what exactly the assembler does in that i told you the two pass assembler consist of the pass one and pass two and as you can read here pass one assembler uh, generate the different kind of symbol table literal table etc etc okay and uh, then pass two pass two pass two generate the machine code okay here you can see pass two generate the machine code by taking the input from the pass one uh, like symbol table etc et so here you can see pass one work of the pass one is generate the symbol table etc and work of the pass two is generate the object program or the machine code okay now uh, in that uh, there are the different kind of data structures are being utilized like uh, we have to utilize the location counter this point to the next location where the code will be placed on the memory location then symbol table we require get contain the different symbols and labels which is present in your program then storage buffer required okay so these these different things are being required as a data structure okay then uh, uh, so this is the uh, diagram that i am uh, trying to show you in the previous uh, slide okay so here you can see this is a, a, a simple two pass assembler source program as assembly language program pass one perform its activity generate the symbol table literal table etc and then give that to the pass two and pass to generate the target program as a machine code 
so our second uh, practical is related with the generation of machine code this practical is just related with the generation of symbol table etc okay now as uh, you can see then uh, uh, you also we have studied different elements of the assembly language like uh, it consists of the mnemonic uh, operation codes as a instruction okay operation codes uh, uh, then uh, see different kind of operands okay and also in the lectures we have seen the statement format of assembly language is like this label then uh, mnemonic opcode then register operand uh, and the memory operand this is the uh, way you write the instruction in the uh, for the assembly language okay and this is the sample uh, different mnemonics instructions are given and their opcode is also being given machine opcodes this is the instruction format that just i told you it consists of the different kind of uh, labels of code register operand memory operand etc okay then there are the uh, different kind of statement used to be there in the assembly language like imperative statement declarative statement and different kind of assembler directives imperative statement already i told you which is, what is the meaning of imperative statement it indicates an action to be performed during the execution of assemble program means which are then uh, which are the different uh, imperative statement like um, uh, move add subtract these are all the considered as a imperative statements okay then we have the declarative statements okay declarative statements there are the two types of declaratives like declare constant declare constant and declare uh, sorry declare storage declare constant then uh, different assembly directives used to be there like uh, basic assembly directives a start directive which indicate the uh, which uh, gives you the address from where uh, for your uh, target program generation uh, will start okay so here i have mentioned assembler directives instruct the assembler to perform certain action during the assembly of program okay so start directive is format is like this start and the constant it indicate that first word uh, of the target program generated by the assembler should be placed in the memory word with the address so it indicates at this constant address at this particular address the first uh, uh, first instruction which is generated by the assembler uh, uh, that first instruction should be placed at this particular location okay or at particular this address so your machine code will start from this address that particular uh, that particular uh, what you can say the action is performed by these start directives okay so as i have mentioned indicate the first word of the target program generated by the assembler so at which particular address your first uh, word or first uh, generated target code instruction must be placed that is being indicated by the uh, start uh, directive at and also it indicate the starting of the program okay and always we have to write at the starting of the program as you can you must have seen in the program also so it uh, as you, you can see here also i have mentioned it indicates at which memory location your uh, first word of the target program must be placed at which memory location which memory location here some address used to be there at that memory uh, location the first generated uh, first generated machine instruction will be get placed okay then we have the end direct indicate the end of the source program okay and uh, this start is having the two meanings like it also indicate the start of the program and also give uh, you the address uh, from uh, at which you can place the first member first uh, word of your target program at this particular address okay then uh, pass structure of the assembler okay what do we mean by the what is the concept of pass that already also we have discussed uh so pass is nothing but the one complete scan of source program is considered the pass okay and so there are the two kinds of assembler which is the single pass assembler and the two pass where in case of the single pass assembler within uh, the by reading the source program only once all the processing is done by the assembler where in case of the two pass assembler the assembler has to read the program multiple times okay so uh, likewise uh, uh, these are the theory part of this practical and now also there are the some advanced assembler directives also that we have discussed like origin directive eq ltrg so origin directive is having this kind of syntax origin and address specification so it indicate the location counter okay it gives you the idea about 
uh, about the at which uh, address the next instruction should we get place so it indicate the location counter okay so it indicates oh, at which uh, address the next instruction should we get place understood so that uh, that uh, action is performed by the origin directive then uh, eq directive is also having this kind of syntax like symbol eq and the address specification so it just uh, this simply associate the name symbol with the address okay for example back if you look so back is any symbol so eq directive uh, associate the this particular uh, what you can say uh, address with this particular symbol what is the address of loop that will be get assigned to the back symbol okay then we have the third advanced assembly directory is also there, that is the ltorg okay that stands for the literal origin and in order to handle the different literals which are it is used to handle the different kind of uh, what we can say uh, literals which is present in your program okay so uh, these are the different advanced assembly directives we have seen the basic directives also basic are start end and advanced assembler directives are uh, origin eq and the uh, last one that was the ltrg so start uh, assembler directive indicate the uh, it gives you idea about the starting of the program and also you give you the address from which you are uh, uh, at which you you are first uh, generated machine instruction should be get place it gives a memory address at which your first uh, machine generated uh, code will be get place okay and so now this is all the theory part now let's move towards the practical part and uh, try to implement the pass on of two pass assembly okay so uh, if you can see uh, okay so as you can see here uh, this is the title of our uh, program java program to implement the pass on of two pass assembler so here our input is going to be the assembly language program and output is going to be the symbol table one okay so here uh, you can see the uh, we have imported the java.io.star package okay which will uh, import all the required classes for our program then we have declared the class pass one okay and then uh, public static required main and uh, we have taken the one buffer reader here okay we have taken the one buffer reader and created its object as a br so what for what purpose we require the buffer reader here so it read the text from character input string buffering character so as to provide the efficient reading of the character so buffer reader we have taken uh, to read the text from character input stream okay then uh, next uh, we have declare the uh, what you can say uh, one string array we have declare here name of that is we have given as a, a. okay and uh, this string array we have taken here uh, uh, because here that input assembly language program we are going to declare inside the program only so this is our input assembly language program okay this program we have to process and to store that we have taken the string array okay first we have declare here one uh, new variable that is the uh, using the new uh, using the new operator we have declare the buffer reader here okay and buffer reader is one of the uh, what you can say uh, feature in the java which is used to read the uh, text from the character input stream okay and then uh, if you see the we have not utilized that buffer reader further actually buffer reader is not going to require us here buffer reader actually required when you uh, give the input from some input file okay but here we have already declared the uh, input inside the program so we will not require the buffer reader okay so if you have given the input file here okay to this program then we uh, then we would have required this uh, buffer reader okay but here we don't require buffer reader still it is being uh, declared even if you remove it it will uh, not matter okay as you can see here mentioned it read the text form character input stream but 
here uh, the input is we are going to write inside the program itself okay now uh, then as you can see here what input we are giving this is the input so here uh, uh, one program we have written okay one program we have written and this is the assembly language program we have to process it okay and generate the symbol table now here you can mention the different uh, assembly language instructions are written like start 101 means as i told you it indicate starting of the program and 101 is the address uh, this uh, uh, start 101 means from the location 101 uh, your machine code machine code will be start okay 101 is the address of first generated machine code first generated word or you can call as a machine code instruction okay so your machine code instruction will start from the 101 that is being shown with the start uh, directives okay then uh, next move r b register one move m like this kind of instructions are there and lastly end uh, instruction is there okay now as you know the assembly language uh, uh, statement consists of the four field in that first field is a label second is a start then third is a register operand and then last is a, a memory operand understood but uh, all the fields are not uh, compulsory uh, okay Lev, uh, some of the fields are optional okay uh, so that's why the optional the field which is not present here that we have indicated with the double inverted commas here okay now uh, let's uh, proceed uh, with the uh, further program as you can see here mm. Now, next uh, we have taken the LC variable. Here you can see int LC uh, integer dot parse int a of 0 to. Now, parse int function returns the integer. Okay. From this particular location, at this particular location, whatever will be the integer that will be written by this uh, parse int. Okay. Uh, parse int function. Okay. Uh, then uh, you can see here also we have declared one more string uh, array here name of that we have given the name as a st now this uh, particular uh, as you can say uh, array that we have taken uh, this is as you can see we have created object and variable st refer to the object in the heap memory now this st uh, uh, this particular uh, what you can say um, uh, two dimensional array that we have taken so that is used to store the our symbol table so our symbol table will have the field like this symbol name uh, sorry symbol name and uh, uh, address this will be our uh, what we can say uh, the symbol table fields okay and here will come different symbols and here different address will come so to store the different symbol and address the this particular st object we have created here okay and uh, we have created with the size of, uh, as you can see, five rows and the two columns. Okay. Only two columns we are going to require symbol name and the address. Okay. Then one more variable is CNT. We have declared here, L variable is declared here. Okay. And then we have taken the one for loop and uh, using that, we'll uh, try to uh, process the given this input. Okay. Now, uh, let's see the kind of what kind of output we are going to get we are going to get this kind of output like the symbol and the value okay so different symbol which is present in your assembly language program and their respective addresses will get okay then uh, uh, let me let me uh, run it first and then uh, we'll proceed uh, with the um, implementation part in details. So name of our program, pass one. Okay. And uh, so here you can see symbol. So there are the five different symbols in our program and their different addresses. So how it is actually done, uh, how it is actually, uh, how this output we are getting that we have to just discuss in the program okay let me take you to the program again 
okay and uh, okay so uh, you just uh, uh, keep an eye on this output and we'll proceed with the uh, how this has come now let's proceed from this instruction lc equal to integer dot parse int lc for the location counter uh, integer dot parse int a of 0 2 now where is our uh, two dimensional array here we have taken string array a of 0 a of 0 2 means whatever the uh, integer uh, whatever the things present at the a 0 2 location return that and store it in the lc so a of 0 2 means 0 row and 0 row and second column okay 0 row and second column so this you have to consider like this this is the first uh, this is the zeroth column then this is a first column okay this is the second column and this is the third column okay this is the zeroth row likewise then first row like this okay so whatever thing present at the location 0 of 2 now what is present at the 0 of 2 0 row and second column 101 so return that and store it in the lc so what is the value of our lc now lc value is 101 okay keep in mind then string st uh, new array here we have taken new st uh, okay then cnt 0 okay then for i equal to 0 i less than 11 i plus plus now if a of i 0 not equal to this I mean just it's an empty space if a of i 0 now what is the value of i 0 0 of 0 0 through 0 column if it is not equal to this is it like is, is this condition satisfied not no not getting satisfied a of 0 0 is empty space okay so then if it is not satisfied then go to the else part means here what is mentioned in the else part lc plus plus now what you what will our lc will become then what our lc will become okay lc previously was 101 okay now lc will become 102 okay lc will become 102 then next <clears throat> again we after this uh, else after this else again we come to this part okay we'll uh, this if now lc will get incremented and then we come to the for loop again i will get incremented i become one okay then a of one zero means a of one zero means this part first row zeroth column a of 10 what is it it is still not satisfying so again else lc plus plus so our lc will become how much now 103 uh, then again i will increment i will become uh, 2 so 2 of 0 not equal to this means this 2 of 0 still it is not satisfying again lc will increment lc will become now 104 how much 104 okay then again for for loop i now i value become 3 okay i value become 3 okay then a of 3 0 means this part a of 3 0 not equal to now now it is satisfying because this is not the empty space this uh, again symbol is there again label is there so it is satisfying so we will go to here st cnt 0 cnt value is 0 0 st cnt means st 0 0 at the st 0 0 at the st 0 0 assign whatever the things present at this uh, location a of i 0 a of i 0 means a of 3 0 means this part a of 3 0 is what again label okay and uh, so your table will be start getting updated here symbol and name of the symbol so uh, sorry symbol name and uh, address 
okay so first symbol we have got that is again first symbol we have got that is a again and then st cnt 01 st cnt 00 is what this st cnt 01 means 0 to first column this is the this is the this is the zeroth column of this table symbol table and this is the first column so at the location st 01 Zero through first column, you have to store something. What you have to store integer dot integer to string lc. So it will return a particular uh, number, it which is there in the lc. Now what is there in the lc now? It the lc there is a one zero four is there. So again, and its address will be get display here one zero four. Understood? Again, and its address will get stored there one zero four. Then your cnt will get increment means this variable get increment. means it will point to the next point now for the next symbol then it check if a of i a of i1 means i value is how much 3 a of 31 is equal to ds a of third row third row first column means at this position a of 31 is the ds is there no okay so then this is not satisfying so if it is not satisfying then do what then increment the then go to the else part and in the else part as you know in the else part what is mentioned increment uh, lc so your lc now will become the 105 so keep in mind your lc has become the 105 okay then again uh, after this else again we go to the for now in the for i value become 4 means it will point to this location Again, at this location, a of four zero not equal to empty, not satisfying. Is it satisfying? No. So, if it is not satisfying, then uh, you can see again we go to the else part, and in, in the else part again you can see else will get incremented. So previously our else was uh, our else was how much? One zero five. So it will become one zero six now. Okay, again we go to the four. Now I value become five. Though it will point to the fifth row, zeroth column. Is it satisfying? No. Again we go to the else part. Then else will increment. It will become one zero seven. Then again we come to this part. It is satisfying here. Still uh, this condition is not satisfying. Still we go to the below else. Then else will increment. It will become one zero eight. then we come to the again for loop will incremented and then we will come to the this point okay so at this point you can see value of i will be now 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so value of i will be 7 so 7 uh a of 7 0 a of 7 0 is what n so uh we are at this point our uh, as we have started generating the table okay Mm, symbol uh, sorry symbol name and address we have found the first symbol uh, that was again okay and we have got it at the address 104 and our i value was now i was seven and our lc counter was at the One zero eight. Okay. So then uh, at a of i zero, uh, you can see at a of uh, i zero means a of seven zero means uh, this is our uh, seven through and uh, zero column means this symbol. Okay. Uh, you can see. Okay. Okay. And uh, then uh, at 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 this point. Okay. So at this point, uh, where we are. Okay. So at this point, so it is satisfying now. And so we will come to this S T C N T now. What was the value of C N T pre one? So at the location one zero means at this point. Store the. 
वाट एवर देर इन दट ए ऑफ आई जीरो ए ऑफ आई जीरो इन द ए ऑफ सेवन जीरो मीन्स वॉट इज देअर एन सो एन विल गेट स्टोर इन द टेबल एंड एस टी सी एन टी वन मीन्स एस टी वन वन एट द एस टी वन वन मीन्स एट दिस वॉट फर्स्ट फर्स्ट रो फर्स्ट कॉलम मीन्स एट दिस लोकेशन स्टोर द इंटीजर इंटीजर टू स्ट्रिंग एल सी so it will used to return string object represented by this integer value so it will return the what is there in the lc so in the lc was 108 so here we will get the 108 okay then cnt will get increment our cnt now uh, become 2 means it will point to the next location next uh, okay here next uh, point then uh, if a of i1 means a of 7 1 is equal to ds this a of 7 1 means this is it equal to ds yes ds stands for the declare story is one of the directive okay so here we are implementing the ds uh, for the implementing the ds uh, directive also and uh, also the other instruction i we have implemented okay now Yes. Then go inside l equal to integer to integer dot parse int a of i i two means whatever there in this location a of i two in the sense a of seven two at a of seven to seven and second column means this what is there at this location six so return six and that six will be get stored in the l and then your l c will get incremented that is l c equal to l c plus l means your l c will become one one four. Because as you know, the DS directive stand for the declare storage. So as it is requiring the six uh, location, so your LC counter will get incremented by six. So that is the reason LC is incremented here, LC plus L. Okay. Then after this, we will again go to the for loop. I will get increment to the eight. Then it will point to this location, eight of zero. Is it is it is it satisfying? Yes, satisfying. Then what symbol you are getting here? Result. So result will be get stored here. Then as st cnt zero uh, at location two zero. Okay, this is two zero. This is a zero one two, and this is a zero column first column. So two zero uh, result table will get stored. Then st two one means at this location it will return some address integer to string lc what was the content of lc 114 so here 114 will be get return 114 then cnt will increment it will become 3 okay then if a of i1 a of, a of 81 equal to ds yes it is there then again this command will execute l equal to integer to parse int a of 82 means this 6 will be get return in the l and then lc again get incremented by 6 so your lc will become 1 20 okay then now your cnt was incremented it has become 3 now and you point to this part then we go to the four for loop again i become 9 okay 9 now 90 means this 90 Nine zero one. So is it satisfying? Yes. So then STCNT three two means at this location store whatever they are in at this location that is what one label. So you write one here. Okay. And then uh, STCNT uh, three one means at this location write which address which is written by this uh, uh, this particular code integer to string LC. So LC was one two zero. So here you return one two zero here one two zero will get printed. Then CNT get incremented. CNT will become four. Then next location here. Then if a of uh, i a of i one equal to ds, no, it is not ds. It is a dc. Okay. Then this is not get satisfied. This is not get satisfied. So go to the else part. Else will increment. Else will become one two one. Then I will get after this I get incremented become ten, and then it will point to the this next point ten zero. It is what term. So then satisfying. Then because of this uh, code term will next label will get display here. Then its address will be get display as a one two one. Okay. Again C N T will increment become five. Then if C N T Uh, if a of i means ten uh, one equal to ds yes it is ds and 
then uh, it will print it as a uh, so three okay here uh, at the location 10 one there is a uh, ds is there so because of that at 10 1 equal to ds yes ds then l equal to integer percent it will return the this value into the l so lc will become 1 2 4 okay plus 3 and then again you go to this point then i will get incremented i become 11 now this condition will get uh, now our uh, loop will stop here and then if loop will stop here we will come out of the while loop okay uh, so we will come out of the for loop okay and uh, when you come out of the for loop then you directly come to the uh, as you can see you come out of this for loop okay this for loop and then you come to this instruction system dot 20 ln so symbol and value such kind of name will be given to the table and one for loop will take to display the whatever result we have stored in the this particular st okay st uh, st array we have taken uh, in that whatever the result we have stored every time as you can see our result is in the st okay so uh, that as here okay here that we have utilized here in here we have utilized here so that will be get display here so we are displaying st i of zero st of i one okay and then you will get the result that uh, as uh, you can see that result i have shown you and once again i show you the same result okay this is our result okay so this is the implementation of uh, what as i am telling you uh, implementation of uh, pass one of two pass assembler and for that we have written the java program and as you can see buffer reader is not equal that's why i remove it and uh, so uh, you can see the we have got the output of pass one that is in the form of the symbol data. okay so i hope all of you have got this you just go through this program uh, once again okay this output uh, must be changed here okay here you have got this output okay this is the output you have uh, got here okay so i hope all of you understood and uh, you will do the practice it once again so thank you all of you